Hey baby, this is Ro. Welcome to the back of the classroom. Today we're talking about Law 36 from 48 Laws of Power. Disdain things you cannot have. Ignoring them is the best revenge. So how would you define disdain? Disdain, the feeling that someone or something is unworthy of one's consideration or respect. If you can't have it, you walk past the mall, you see a pair of shoes, you can't afford it, you ain't got the money for it. Eh, change your mindset about it. I don't need it. It's not worth it. I could do better without it. Why put myself in a situation that puts me further than where I want to be than getting it and that feeling's only temporary? Sure, I'll look nice in it. Sure, people will talk about it. But how far am I going to get in life spending the money on it that I can put to something else? It's all about your mindset. And the stronger your mindset is, the better you can move through life because you understand things that's more beneficial to you overall than smaller parts. You've heard expressions where they say we might have lost a battle, but we didn't lose the war. Make certain sacrifices. Position yourself to look further ahead than the moment. Sure, certain moments is worth having. I totally get it. But sometimes you got to make sacrifices. And it all starts with the mindset. So. What I like about this chapter is it definitely helps you understand because you can't, a book can't develop your mindset. That's something you have to do with yourself. But you have to have a certain level of understanding of what you're doing and why so you can build that foundation that your mindset is going to sit on. And that requires discipline. So without a better understanding, without understanding your whys, your why nots, Right? Know what you're doing it for so you can progress. And your foundation becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. Now, depending on where you are in life, some things you might have to tear down and rebuild. That should be okay too because you have to adapt. Everyone has to adapt. That's just part of life. But you have to be comfortable and okay with doing so. You have to know your situation where you were before isn't the situation you're in now. Uh, the best way I can explain it is if you ever had a set of Legos and you wanted to build something specific because that's what you was into. You took the pieces you had and you built it. Once you had it, you took a picture, you appreciated what you did, you showed everybody. And then when somebody goes, hey, can you build something else? You can't want to hold on to the structure that you built because now that's no longer necessary. It's not required. You've achieved your goal. So take it down, break it down, and then build something new. Your ability to produce is strongly tied to your success. How well, how well, how adjustable can you be to tearing down the old and building something new? Starting from over every position you get to. So sometimes you might not have to tear something down, but you just can't build on that. You have to start somewhere else. But Everyone can still look to what you have done as your experience, as your, your, your knowledge. Because how did you build such a strong structure? Hey, can you do something like that for me? I don't want that exactly, but I want the same level of professionalism, the same integrity, the same, the same energy that you put into that. I want you to do something for me, but I have my own specifics. That's how you move forward. And having the mindset to look at something and go, mm, I can't have it. I don't need it. Those are sacrifices that a lot of people have to learn to make because there are things that you're going to want. And if you're still pondering on the old, you're not going to be able to move forward. So without having that mindset to go, mm, you know what? I don't need it. I'm better off without it you're still gonna be stuck in the past wondering and you can't focus all of your attention to something new if you're still pondering on something old, something you can't have, something that's not for you. If you still feel like it's for you and you gotta to work toward it, you're working toward getting something instead of being somewhere. And at the end of the day, 
don't hold on to materialistic things. If it if it's for you and you can have it and you build up enough to get it and not be short anywhere else, sure, go ahead, have it. But at that point, your mindset isn't based on something you can have and it doesn't, you don't lose anything for having it. We're talking about the things you cannot have. And how do you feel about it because you can't have it? Did you learn to have, did you learn to ignore it? Or are you, are you if there's somebody you like, they don't like you back. You can't change their mind. And even if you did, look at the energy you had to put into it to get them to like you. And then you also have to understand once you move in that direction, you got to keep doing those things. Is it worth it? Or can you be yourself? Can you do the things that you normally do? No? Not interested? No problem. Ignore that. Move forward. Continue to grow. Continue to build. Because those are the things that better you. And if that person's still around, they turn around and go, oh, wow, this person doing this, 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 and that. Oh, I had no idea. You didn't take the time to figure them out. No one said because you like somebody, you have to do certain things, but a friendship, uh, hey, can we work together? Can we do something? And you're building a relationship based on one thing that can obviously grow into other things. You've met kids in school. You went to school for an education, but somewhere along the line, you did group projects. You played together. You ate lunch together. You shared who you was with somebody, and you build friendships based on what people can accept about you and you can accept about them. But if they don't give you the chance and opportunity, cool, no problem. But on graduation day, when they realize you're valedictorian or you passed all your regents, you passed all your tests, and you're going places, they'll stop and go, wow, that person was really smart. I missed out on the opportunity. And if they don't, it's still their loss. But you aren't focused on the fact that you didn't make that friend. You didn't have the opportunity to do things with them when they was partying and having a good time. You was doing your grades. Or while they was doing something else, you partying and had a good time. If it's not for you, no problem. Fall back, look at where you are, look at the direction you're going, and keep moving forward. Because when something's a problem, you still have that same mindset. Ah, there's nothing I can do about it. You address it, and you move forward. They say by acknowledging a petty problem, you give it existence, right? And it's, it's given credibility. So when you argue with somebody that you know it's not the case, it gives the outward appearance there might be something to it. Because why would you go so hard to defend something that's not true? If somebody said, you can't draw, I'm not going to argue with you. I could just draw something to show it to everybody and then you look like the liar. You look like you're misinformed. I don't have to argue. I could simply do it, show it, and move on. You're the one who have to explain yourself because you made the accusations. You said things that wasn't true. I can validate it and never have to go back and forth with you. I find arguing to be a tug of war of someone wanting the other side to take their side. I don't need you to take my side. I can pull up, show up, show out, and then leave. And if you still don't agree with my abilities, then that's a personal perception you have I can't do anything about. And same thing with materialistic things. If it's something you can't have or someone you can't have, show contempt for it. Mm, I don't need it. It's beneath me. Why? Because you know who you are. And at the end of the day, when you start lowering who you are, to adjust for something else, that's now who you have to be for that. Is it worth it? Do you need that? Is that the energy you need to carry where you're directing your energy toward having something or someone where you can be focused on getting to where you want to be and be more successful, being more happy? I find happiness to be when you can look back at the decisions you made and it worked out the way you wanted it to. Hell, even if you failed and still chose to look at your failure, look at how you made mistakes and then improve on it, and then become successful from learning from your mistakes. It makes you an overall better person because you don't have a problem making mistakes and learning from it, so you can understand why you do and don't do certain things and move forward. But you gotta be okay with making mistakes. There's nothing wrong with failing, at least you try. There's a lot of people who sit on the couch who does the bare minimum and will never exceed and excel 
in different things in their life because they refuse to try. They refuse to make mistakes. Trying is an excuse for failure for me, so I'd rather just do it and then learn from my mistakes. I'm not gonna stop with the failure. I write it down, I look at it, I pay attention. I see how I feel about it. I reinstill the failure with pain so I can associate it. So whenever something goes wrong, I feel a way about it. And because I feel a way about it, I don't wanna feel that way again. So I'm gonna do better and I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna make sure it sticks. And that pain is gonna reinstill that lesson so I can never feel that way because it makes me feel a way. Feelings is personal. I don't have to let it out for everybody to see and feel. What would it matter? It's the motivation for me. My brain is my logic that gets me to where I need to go. The pain, the suffering, the happiness, the joy, that's the motivation that I use to move forward. So if you want to show or have any type of revenge to anything, show it no interest. Move forward. And you'll show superiority to the things that you can't have or the issues because you're not worried about it. You're going to move forward doing the things you know you need to do, and that's what you give your focus to. Your good days is when you focus on positivity, and your bad days is when you focus on negativity. No one can escape the bad things in life, but we can overcome it. We can move forward. We can better ourselves from who we were yesterday. And every day you wake up, that's a win. Everything that you do and accomplish, whether it's making your bed, brushing your teeth, cleaning your house, having a breakfast or something that gives you energy so you succeed, you reading a book and you bettering yourself in your education, that makes you better than you were yesterday. So if you made it this far on the podcast, I thank you. I appreciate you. And if anything, I'll holler at you later. Peace.